This is the BMW X3M competition and it's a rare bird because it's a luxury SUV that does everything you could ever possibly want one to do. It goes really fast, it makes a glorious noise and it's practical too. Thank you for watching, see you next time. Well, there is a bit more to it than that. I mean, this is a really good looking eye-catching car that was designed by an Aussie, a young man called Calvin Luck from Sydney. Calvin did a clever thing when he put pen to paper on this car. He managed to avoid the wrath of BMW fans everywhere by not giving this car a giant snout at the front. No, this car has a more traditionally shaped BMW kidney grille here at the front in a very nice gloss black. LED laser lights too, they're some of the best ones around. And look at the size of these vents down the bottom here. This car needs a lot of air to breathe and all of these are 100% operational. Where Audi still keeps things looking fairly conservative in their RS line of cars, BMW go for a little bit of extra flair with the M's and you can see that here in the wheels too. These are 21 inch alloys, there's two styles available, both available as a no cost option. I think these are the best looking ones personally. And you can also pick the colour of your brake calipers, I reckon red's the best. It does get just a little bit busy here at the back though. There's a lot going on with the rear spoiler up top here and these light clusters that I really like the design of, but they're quite intricate. Same with the X3M badging. We've got quad exhausts down the bottom there, which make an absolutely epic noise for a six cylinder engine. And powered tailgate, which hides a 550 litre storage space and expands by a further 1,000 litres with the rear seats down. One of my pet annoyances in reviewing lots of different types of cars is trying to work out how to open the bonnet on each one. Almost every car is different and I can't figure it out on this one. Could pull out the manual, but that's almost admitting defeat. Let's see, do they call it bonnet or do they go for the American style hood? Right, open bonnet. Pull the lever, bonnet is unlocked. After releasing the lever, pull again. You've just got to pull it twice. If only I'd looked at the lever inside properly, I would have noticed that it says 2X on it, meaning pull twice to open. Anywho, underneath the bonnet, we find BMW's famous straight six, three litre turbocharged petrol engine from the M3 and the M4. It outputs 375 kilowatts of power and a heart stopping 650 Newton meters of torque. And it will shoot you to 100 k's per hour in 3.8 seconds, which is about the same speed as the much smaller M3. And this is a two ton SUV. I don't know how BMW have done it, but They've done it. It is a magnificent engine and one of the most well-known in the world for a very good reason. Fuel economy is not so great though at 10.7 litres on an uh, average combined cycle, but if you're worried about petrol costs, you're probably not buying this car anyway. The interior might feel a bit familiar to anyone who's driven a 5 Series Beamer lately and that's because the X3M and the 5 Series sit on the same platform and as such this car gets the 5 Series interior. Although there's lots of bits of the M3 and M4 in here too. A great mix of materials of course as you'd expect from BMW so we've got stitching with leather up the top here and on the steering wheel. A no brain, no cost option here with carbon fibre accents on the doors and on the dashboard. It is a really nice cabin. The first thing you notice apart from the carbon fibre of course is the 12.3 inch centre console screen. Now this is such a high resolution screen it actually makes Apple CarPlay look a bit low res and blocky by comparison. The software on it is really really good. Seriously BMW do this better than just about anybody else. It really is neck and neck between them and Audi as to who does the best software for centre console screens these days. Heaps of customization available through this screen. You can customise your drive modes, change the colour of the ambient lighting on the interior, also have the news and weather read out to you and there's even an app to record your lap times around the racetrack. This system can also record your driving, it kind of works like a dash cam but it uses the external cameras that are dotted around the car and it will save a recording of your driving up to 20 or 15 seconds before an incident and another 15, 20 seconds after it. So if you have an accident, you actually have a recording of what happened immediately before and after, which is pretty handy. 
Another feature which is sort of similar to the one that you'll find in a Hyundai or Kia in the sounds of nature is BMW's Caring Car. I've got to actually turn the engine on for this. So if I push the Caring Car app, there are two modes here, Vitalize and Relax. So if you need a bit of a pick-me-up while you're driving, you push this Vitalize button and it will start playing this pumping music through the sound system to really get you fired up and ready for your journey. And it's also pulsating the air conditioning. It's blowing waves of cold air over me just to really make sure that I'm alert. The other mode that you should probably never use while you're driving is relax. And if you put this one on, it'll close the roof here on the panoramic sunroof and play gentle music. And it's also raised the temperature of the air conditioning up to 23 degrees, making it actually quite warm and it's blowing waves of warm air on me. This will put you to sleep. I don't think you'd want to use this while you're driving. This system also has gesture control, meaning you can raise the volume or change tracks without actually touching the screen or the jog wheel, just by waving your finger at in front of it like that. You look a little bit ridiculous. If you want to change tracks, you just kind of hitchhike that way, or if you want to go back, you go that way. It's a bit weird. Wouldn't it just, you can just do that, just touch. Climate controls underneath that, pretty standard BMW affair. Then we've got the customizable buttons that you can program to whatever you want them to be. Some additional sound system controls. And then we've got a roller door here, which is a bit hesitant to open and I really don't want to break. Ah, got it. Underneath that, we've got a couple of cup holders and a space for your phone, but no wireless charging, which is a really odd thing not to include, especially since this car has wireless Apple CarPlay, but for reasons best known only to Messrs B, M and W, they've decided not to include that in their Australian cars. No idea why. The centre console, pretty much the same as the BMW M3 and M4. So we've got the jog wheel here, which you can also use to control the centre console screen if you don't want to touch it with your dirty fingers. Uh, a gear shifter here, which operates in a similar sort of way to a manual transmission almost, in that drive is off to the right here, and you've got to put it up and to the left for reverse, in the middle for neutral. Drive mode buttons there, a uh, nice, uh, well, not too huge centre bin here, but there is a USB charger in there but the armrest on here has some very nice leather on it with stitching. Head up display on the windscreen is the BMW M style so it changes between a couple of different looks. I really like it when it's in track mode because it takes on a very 1980s kind of design. The digital instrument cluster same as the one in the M3 and the M4. There's not a huge amount of customization available. It is probably something that Audi do just a little bit better but it's a nice sharp picture and they do look pretty good. The steering wheel, leather wrapped, big chunky BMW steering wheel uh, with uh, paddle shifters here. We've got the M red and blue stitching on it too. And confusingly, BMW seem to do this backwards to just about every other car maker. They put the cruise controls here on the left and the audio system controls on the right. Pretty much everyone else has them the other way around. So that seems to catch me out every time I drive a BMW. We've also got the M mode presets here where you can design your own drive mode and save it as a preset here, M1 and M2. The seating position isn't quite as low in the cabin as the M3 or the M4. And being an SUV, we are kind of sitting up a bit high but it is very comfortable uh, and good visibility too, right to the front edge of the bonnet. With the high sills of an SUV, not great in the blind spots, but there is blind spot monitoring in the wing mirrors, of course. The seats themselves, fairly comfortable, not the softest I've ever sat in, but there is good support and uh, lots of electric adjustment, of course, with uh, lumbar support and the seats are heated, but not ventilated. And of course, not forgetting my favorite feature, the uh, M badge that uh, lights up in the dark. And the back seat of the X3M competition is a little bit tight, if I'm honest. Um, look, this is a mid-size SUV. It's never going to be great for a person who's 193 centimetres tall like me. So as such, my knees are pretty hard up against the plastic shell of the racing seat in front of me. Not really ideal. Do have a good amount of headroom though and a great view through the panoramic sunroof. There is another zone of climate control back here for rear seat passengers and there's also two USB-C ports. Armrest with a, oh, a previous reviewer or someone has left a barbecue sauce container. 
I wonder how long that's been there for. It doesn't even smell anymore. That's how old it is. Let's pop that back. It wasn't mine. Driving the X3M competition is pretty much exactly how you'd want it to be and expect it to be. It's pretty bloody awesome. While I do like the smooth, clean, minimalist lines of an Audi interior, there's a certain excitement to a BMW one. It's just like it's all geared to just go really quickly with buttons and the carbon fiber and it just has a real sense of excitement about it. You can personalize the drive to the nth degree. I mean, there's literally endless combinations of how firm you want the suspension, the responsiveness of the engine, the transmission, and look, no matter what mode you put it in, the ride is always gonna be firm. I mean, they call the uh, chassis response normal, sport, and sport plus, where really it should just say firm, firmer, and firmest. But, you know, not to the point of being terribly uncomfortable. It's not like driving a Hyundai i30N where you're kind of really bouncing along the road and putting your back out every time you go over a speed hump. It's definitely not that. All right, zero to 100 in the BMW X3 M competition is officially 3.8 seconds. Let's have a look at what that's like. Okay, I've got everything set to sport. Let's see how we go. Come to a stop, build some revs. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> oh my God. That was Tesla level quick. <laughs> Holy crap, that was good. And the noise, oh. I think only a V8 would actually sound better, but that six makes an amazing sound. And we're on my favorite little bit of twisty road and it's just been raining, so it is nice and slick, but that is not gonna upset this car in the least bit. <laughs> so much traction, so much power. On the big hairpin bend here, I barely feel like I need to slow down. And my favorite little corner here where just about every front wheel drive car loses traction. This one actually just had a little bit of wheel slip just then. That's how much power there is going to these wheels. You do ride up fairly high in this car, which is unusual for an M car. I mean, most of the cars in the BMW M range are, uh, you know, sedans or coupes. So being in a SUV, with this insane performance, but yet riding up quite high, it's a, a different experience. And is it a turn back car, a car so good looking that you have to turn back and look at it after you've parked? Yeah, yeah it is. At $173,000 and about a grand more for how you see it here, the BMW X3M competition is an amazing machine. Everything that it does, it does very well. But if you get one of these, it's almost criminal not to take it to the track because if you don't, you're just denying its very reason for existence.